everybody, this is Deb with Truthfication Chronicles, and in my video, Why Young Blood, I had a picture of a Spencer's t-shirt, and I want to elaborate a little bit on that, show you some of the other designs, and just give you a few thoughts to think about. If you go to Spencer's Gifts and you go down under t-shirts, you go down to pop culture t-shirts, you'll see a list of Stephen Rhodes t-shirts are the ones that you want to focus on. And if you go into these, you'll see he has some rather disturbing t-shirts. And one of the most disturbing things about them is caring for your demon cat. Look at the horns on the cat. And you have a child here sitting on a pentagram. And then down at the bottom it says pets and responsibilities. And I think probably the most disturbing thing to me is that these have children in them. And it's using children to promote occult things. If you go on, like the next one is Timmy's, Timmy's Visitor t-shirt. Timmy has a visitor. Look at his visitor. Isn't that a lovely thing? In the description of one of these, it says that it's a hilarious shirt. I don't find them hilarious at all. How about this one? Sell your soul. Economics for children. We'll go in a little bit more so you can see this. Cash for souls, $5. And here's a pentagram along the side. Here's the contract for the kids to sign. You've got kids here being tricked into it by another kid over here. I mean, sell your soul. They have no clue how valuable a soul is. If you're a Christian, you need to share this because people need to see the kind of t-shirts that are considered pop culture these days. It goes on and on. All the rest of these are just children in very bad, sick situations. And this guy seems to think that these are wonderful. Here's one where they're making brownies. They're special brownies. And then down here we have one with Satan in it. Here's one with a child being wrapped around by a snake. says hugs. And then, of course, there's this one, which is... Necromancy for beginners. Activities for children. That's what it says down here. Activities for children. Yeah, that's what you want your children learning how to do. Raise the dead, talk to the dead. Uh-huh. That's not a call at all. Now, this one's really odd because if you look at that shirt, that is not at all the shirt that you see when you do the quick view. Because the shirt you see when you get the quick view is archery for beginners. Again, activities for children. Look at that. I mean, this guy evidently thinks that these are funny. There are two that are actually missing. The first one is the one that I used in the Why Young Blood video. Let's summon demons. So I guess maybe he got enough complaints about that that he had to take that one down. But I mean, that's just crazy. And then there's this one. My first knife fight. And it says hobbies and games. I mean, he's using kids to promote all these horrible things. And he thinks these shirts are evidently hilarious. They're funny. There's something to see. But anyway, I did take screenshots of those so I would have them. I'm kind of glad I did because those two are no longer listed on here. Uh, maybe they had enough complaints about them. But frankly, I think they should complain about all of them because they're just crazy. Look, little girl's driving. She's running over the guy with a steamroller. I mean, seriously, that's funny. This is not funny. This is sick that they're doing this and using children. I want you to take a moment and think about something. If you are under 50, you may not quite get what I'm going to say now, but if you're over 50, I think you will. When I was growing up and I was four years old, if I would have seen these action figures, I would have been scared because they didn't look like real people. They looked more demonic. And we've gotten to the place now in our country where this is commonplace. This is what our movies are about. This is what we see all the time. Little four-year-old kids, they play with these. They don't see anything wrong with them. Are we desensitizing our kids to this kind of demonic picture? Are we opening the doors for them to be more exposed to occult things than we really should be, especially at such a young age? Because they don't have any discernment at that age. They take it all in, and whatever is common is acceptable to them. They're not going to stand up and say, well, this guy looks like a demon, because it's accepted in our culture. It's just a question I want you to think about. How much of the occult have we allowed to permeate our culture without us doing anything to stop it? 
Have we allowed them to normalize this kind of stuff? Just like with the Why Young Blood video, they're trying to desensitize us. They're trying to make us think that drinking blood is normal. In fact, it's a good thing. You should be able to drink young blood. It will make you healthier. They're desensitizing us to it. They're making it so it appears normal. And they're doing the same thing with pedophilia, which I will discuss in another video. How about Amazon? Yeah, let's go to Amazon for a minute. The occult coloring book. Let's take a fun children's activity and let's turn it into the occult. Zombie coloring book. How about this one? There's the blood again. This is the last coloring book on the left. Fan art anthology. Yes, so you can have nightmares too. And the worst thing is we're not having nightmares because we are so desensitized to this stuff. Supernatural, based on the TV show. Official coloring book. Here's one. Occult coloring book for grown-ups. Occult Satanism coloring book. Dark magic and voodoo patterns. Paranormal knowledge and satanic rituals inspired adult coloring book. Really? Then down here you have Book of Shadows, Wicked Journey into Wheel of the Year, Gods, Herbs, Incenses, Zodiac, and Oils. For those of us who are over 50, we understand this was not normal growing up. We never saw this stuff. This was not part of our growing up experience. The occult symbols that have come in are part of this cabal. This is what they've done all along, but they used to be underground and people didn't know about them. Then the internet comes along and we can easily go to a website that shows us everything about Wicca that we ever wanted to know or any other form of witchcraft or Satanism, whatever we want. It's all right there at our fingertips. And this is causing a real crisis in our society because it's affecting everything. How about raising your children as pagans? Yes, there you go. You can have activities for your pagan kids so you can make sure you raise them upright and they are pagan when they grow up. Well, the Bible has a few things to say about this. First of all, it has a very important passage in Isaiah verses 20 and 21. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and clever in their own sight. It actually goes on and it's not too far off from what these people are. Woe to those who are heroes at drinking wine and champions at mixing drinks, who acquit the guilty for a bribe but deny justice to the innocent. So these are things that God condemns. And when you call evil good and good evil, it's a topsy-turvy world. The cabal is desensitizing us to what's good and trying to turn it upside down and make good evil and evil good. Then there's this, an important verse from 2 Corinthians 11, verses 14 and 15. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising then if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness. Their end will be what their actions deserve. Q has said several times that we need to be careful about those we trust the most. And this is what's happening. We have the people who are worshiping Satan masquerading as angels of light. They're trying to persuade us that good is evil and evil is good. So Q has said, we need to put on the armor of God. He posted this. He posted the whole passage. And if you're not familiar with this passage, it's from Ephesians 6. I'm going to go ahead and read it. Finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. These are very important things we need to be aware of. And it is a spiritual battle. When Q talks about it, he's talking about our struggle being good versus evil. Because it's a spiritual battle that's been going on since even before 
the Garden of Eden. When the fall of man in the Garden of Eden took place, that was the first of many battles, and it's gone back and forth, and we've had the spiritual struggle going on. It's just most people don't see it, so they don't think it's real. But it is. It's very real, and it's happening. Right now, there's a battle for our country and our entire world, for humanity itself. We need to stand strong. We need to put on this whole armor so that we can stand against the devil's schemes. Because there really is a devil, and he really is trying to take down humanity. So we not only need to be very aware of this, but we need to help others become aware of this too. Just like Q has wanted us to be red-pilled, to wake up, we need to wake up spiritually. I've had a few people say that I'm putting Q in the place of God or I'm putting Trump in the place of God. No, not at all. They are merely tools to do God's work. God is the one who is doing the work through them. And they realize that because if, if you read Q's post, you understand that. If you listen to Trump speak, you understand that. There are many times that he refers back to God. And Q says they start every day with a prayer in the Oval Office. They understand this spiritual battle. We need all of us to start understanding it, and we need to be spreading it to everybody else. Being red-pilled about the political situation in our world is very good. Being red-pilled about the spiritual situation is even better, because this affects our immortal souls. So that's what I have for you today. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you later. 